All right, so I know what you're thinking. What the heck are you doing with that? Well, let me tell you right now, this is the base for the new dual purpose bike. Uh, it's an inline four heavy street bike. And it's not the first time I've had one of these for my on and off bike. Yep, usual sitting syndrome. Everything was pretty disgusting. That needle was stuck in, and these ones were just stiff. Got all the jets soaking. I don't know. I think I caught it just in time. So the next step is to eliminate this oil cooler. These things here are really nothing but problems. It didn't come with an oil cooler. I don't know why anybody would think it needed an oil cooler. So it's just a whole lot of plumbing and nonsense that it shouldn't have. So I'll show you what I had to do. So the oil filter housing had this plumbing screwed into it. I think this is... Um, part of the cooler like the original oil filler housing is now missing so what I got to do is plug these holes and I don't have the proper ones but I have these ones for now which is great until I change the oil again then I'll change them out so I'm just basically eliminating these elbows because we want to give her hell we don't want nothing hanging down Got the carburetors all put back together. I got that ridiculous fairing off of there. No more of those ridiculous pullback ape hangers. Um, I had a original set of KX500 bars. They're chrome molly with a crossbar. I fitted them on there. Um, look at this ridiculous fairing. Look at it. How dare you. So, it's getting more towards dual purpose every time I work on it. Oh, and these mufflers, look at that rig. So look, the thing was so ridiculously loud with the baffles removed. Whoever had it before me took the baffles out. So I had this set of Sportster baffles that I just kind of tapped in there and they fit snug, right? So, <laughs> so they wouldn't fall from the street. Made a little rig there and uh, it sounds pretty good actually. Um, and I looked long and hard for a set of tires and I came up with a set. They're mixed matched brands, but finding a 16 inch rear adventure tire was really tricky. Pirelli was really the only company that made something that looked feasible. And then this front one here, that's what I was really looking for for both of them, but you know. baffles are just temporary it's just so I can work on it without it sounding so ridiculous I'm going to make baffles seems like I've done quite a few tires this month or this season this pig's getting one. Basically just for safety reasons. You need you need some kind of tread. Rocking something like this through the woods. But it's tired. That thing's gonna be hard again at the tire changing stand. I made this for a friend of mine and uh, I use it more than he does. Even though I'm gonna beat the brakes off of this thing in the mud. <laughs> I still like to clean everything as I'm working on it. Wheel came up like new. Got everything cleaned up, ready to rock. 
I did get new brake pads. I didn't want to have it all apart and put the old ones in there. That's just wrong. I mean, come on now. Got to have brakes, right? Um, they were like a little bit sticky, so I popped the uh, puck out and cleaned out the bore and uh, inspected the seal. Everything's real good. Um, typical original paint flaking off, but it shouldn't stick anymore. And when you have your brakes apart, you want to grease these with high temperature, like wheel bearing grease or that grease that comes with your brake pads when you do brakes on your car. I always save those little packs for stuff like this. These have to slide in and out. Change the fluid. The usual stuff when bikes sit, the fluid goes bad, the carbs go bad, the tank goes bad. It's mostly labor though. Front tires next. Helps to have a forklift or a lifting device with a big heavy pig like this. I don't know how much it weighs, it's heavy. Got to do the uh, treatment on the front brakes too. These ones weren't happy. Both front calipers here. I got the pucks out. Um, if anybody's wondering how to get these pucks out, you use your air gun. Um, I put a piece of shrink tube on the front of it so it doesn't damage the threads. And you want to stick a rag where the puck is and blow air and it pops the puck right out. You got to be careful though because man it comes out. So, as you can see, these got some goo on them. You know, brake fluid just turns to goo. See in there? And that's why these were hanging up. When I first got this bike, you couldn't even push it. So, between that and a new front master cylinder, I'm going to flush the lines out. And, uh, you know, for as much as I'm going to ride this bike and what I'm using it for, it, it'll be fine. I mean, if I was going to commute, new lines would definitely be in the works. Got the wheel cleaned up. Got to spend a little time here cleaning this, make sure that tire seats. These are tubeless, so it's critical that that seals. It's got a little bit of goo on there. What I'm going to do, look, it's, it's looking pretty mean, right? So I kind of figured this. I didn't really measure. I'm just heading into it because... So just to save some extra space, I got my uh, fender bolts rigged up here in my collet chuck, and I'm going to... I'm going to take a little bit off them because they're pretty thick and I'm trying to gain everything I can so I'm going to zero out my quill DRO, bring it over and I'm going to take like half of that bolt head on. that bolt down like half that's all you need so I gained uh, tons of room by doing that and I tell you that front tire is exactly what I was looking for the back one's kind of tough to get because it's a 16 inch rim um, I might have to do a little customization and of course they lost the key so I actually got lucky and had a Kawasaki key that I jiggled and turned for like 10 minutes and I got it to turn on once. So it was stuck on the on position. So I have an alligator clip on the negative post. Well, that's getting old. So I got a new key switch. So this old one is getting replaced. Got a brand new direct replacement. Don't ask me how, for $17 free delivery. I mean, look at this thing, it's metal. It's got like a massive plug on it. It came with two keys. It's got a steering lock in it. How do you make that for $17 and ship it for free? It's freaking spooky is what it is. I can't see that being good for anybody. I took those ridiculous mufflers out of there and that's what we got just a big old hole and man it sounds nasty horrible so to make these fit a little better carefully measured and I cut them in half and this is what you got 
It's an awesome baffle. It's it's magical and also mechanical. You can't see through it. So it's it's mechanically baffled on top of having packing in it. I made two of these rings. It's like 14 gauge mild steel sheet metal. And it fits over that just enough so I got a lip to weld to. And then these, this thing here fits right into the hole. And here's, I got one already welded up. And we're gonna jam that in there and I'll show you what my plan is. So there's the fit up. All I gotta do is, I think I'm just gonna tack it in four places. I'm not gonna continuously weld that. Right, just threw it together. Fresh sprockets, fresh chain, fresh tires. Look at that tire. She's ready to rock. Watch your fingers. Yeah, she's ready to rock. Mm-hmm. <laughs>